Hello, my good friends from YouTube and TikTok and everywhere in between. How are you guys doing today? Hope you guys are doing well. Let's uh, let's get this going, shall we? So, yesterday was really fun because I just spent all day drawing, and I was I came up with someone really cool that I'm about to show you guys. But before that. Let's start the show. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Ragan. I'm an artist, a teacher, a mentor, a designer, illustrator, cartoonist, blah, 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 blah whatever you want to call me. And today we will be learning something cool together. So first, like we do in every show, I would like to ask you guys to please like and share the stream as you guys join so that we can get a bigger audience. So like the stream, share the stream, and make sure that you guys are supporting right back by commenting and all that stuff. If you guys can do me a favor and please remind people to do this throughout the stream, that would be amazing. Any of you that want to be extra helpful, you know, just make sure to remind people here and there to share the stream. That way we can actually get a nice big audience. So like and share the stream if you guys want to help support. But let me talk to you guys about what we did yesterday. So, okay, yesterday was a very, very good day. Like I put off work just completely. Like I, I just couldn't focus on work. Like I could not do it because I came up with, after we sketched on the first sketch, like this is what we did yesterday on our stream. So we did a little bit of talking about the sketchbook rules and like as a new sketchbook, you know, I wanted to show you guys how I approach every single one of my sketchbooks. And then we talked about these. Let me tell you guys real fast how they are. The 10 sketchbook rules are one, use it as a learning tool. Two, learn something new or refine an existing thing with each page you use. Three, draw with a purpose. Don't just draw for drawing. Four, notes are crucial for your art growth and fix your errors immediately. Five, sketchbook is yours. So share or don't share, it's up to you. Don't worry so much about what other people think. It's for you to enjoy. Don't stress. Number six, don't rip pages off your sketchbooks. So keep them for prosperity. You will learn from your old drawings. So even if you draw something that's bad, don't rip it off. They leave it in there. It's just part of your history. Number seven, have fun with it. Don't stress out. Art is hard as hell already. We don't need extra stress from having to deal with our sketchbooks not being pretty or whatever. Eight, be creative. Push your limits. Be, do the same thing that you want to do. Find out how you can apply what you want to do to what the things you want to create. So learn and push your limits in the areas of perspective, anatomy, posing, and just your imagination in general. So you work on those things so you can find your flaws and then you work on your flaws so that you can improve on that and find something else to work on. So that is essentially what your sketchbook is supposed to be doing. It's helping you push so you don't have to do it while you're working on a project. If you're working on a freelance project, you don't want to be guessing. You want to be able to get it done. Right, Milky? Mm -hmm. So as Milky says, as Milky says, you know, listen to Milky because Milky understands the fact that you don't want to be guessing while you're doing creative work for other people. You want to get it done quick and you want to be efficient, you know, so that way you could get it done in your sketchbook so you don't have to do it later. Number nine, draw what makes you happy. So if what makes you happy are cute little things, draw cute little things. If what makes you happy is anime stuff, draw anime stuff, you know, focus your foundation so heavily that you can then later on, focus completely on the things that you want to do. So if you are lacking on your fundamentals right now, focus on that for a couple sketchbooks and then go into heavy, heavy into whatever you want to do. I promise that you will be at a professional level very soon. And then number 10 is to have fun. Again, I already named it as number seven, but it's so important. It has to be there twice. You know, this is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be for you to improve and have a gigantic blast with. So... That is what we taught yesterday. And then off stream, I went a little crazy. So off stream, I started thinking, okay, so how can I make like sketchbooks for people that would actually be like worth 
like taking every day and sketching and helping you focus and stuff like what would I want in a sketchbook? So I've been thinking about what to do for a printed sketchbook. So having like icons to like tell you what you need to focus on in practice exercises and pages and like stuff like that, right? Like ghosting images. And then I'm just started going crazy and going like, okay, well, this lesson would go this lesson and this lesson would go for this lesson and this lesson would go for this lesson. And then, and then I just started going like into a bunch of different cool things. And then it ended up being into like really cool like interactions of basic shapes, like a square and a circle can be used to create your eyebrows. Right. And then you can use that to create your eyebrows in any single way and direction. And then it helps you map out how to draw your eye. If you draw it from like the middle of your eyeball to a little square, it provides you a perfect eyebrow stuff. I was like, what? No way. That's so cool. And then I just decided to draw like what I was going to what clicked and just put that at the top of the page. Right. And then that's where Mr. Clicky came in. It's Mr. Clicky, not just Clicky. Mr. Clicky. So Mr. Clicky is going to be the person that guides us through the things that made things click for me. So it might not be the same for you. Unfortunately, we all think a little bit different. So Mr. Clicky is going to point to you guys when things click for me. And that way I can help you guys understand that that's an important topic or stuff. So then I decided to draw Vicky. <laughs> So I just started drawing my own original characters and I was like, okay, I'm going to do some style exploration with this character. I want to be able to see what type of pinup style I want to create. Do I want to create like a little uh, like a young girl with like an innocent face or do I want to just make it like super stylized like a la Chris, like Chris Sanders with a lot of curves or do I want to apply more of my own basic styling to it or do I want to go somewhere more along the lines of like a nice heavy set like you know pinup like with a long elongated body like let's say Scott Campbell or anything like that or do I just want to come up with my own version of it? like how to actually make things work. So I'm going to be doing this a lot in this sketchbook and it's going to be like a reference guide essentially for the style that I want to adopt. So I'm going to be talking to you guys and explaining to you guys once you understand a certain basic part of anatomy, how you can start stylizing those things to be able to mold them to whatever you feel like. So everything that we learn, we're going to start applying style to these things as well. We're not just going to go and do basic perspective. You're not going to do basic anatomy anymore. We've already done enough videos on that. So if you guys want to, I will always touch up on the topics, but we will be moving on to more advanced topics. In this case, we're going to be talking about stylization and what you can actually start doing with your designs once you develop a style. So squishy, you're gonna be frank, you're gonna be squished down there because this sketchbook is a little weird. Hold on. I need something underneath. All right, so let's start with uh, developing a style for heads. How about that? Heads are something that is going to be something that is always going to be important for heads. This is going to be a topic that is going to be incredibly important for you guys to understand. If you guys have not please done so, please like and share the stream before we start our lesson. We will start once we get to 100 shares and we start to, we get to, I don't know, let's say 7,000 likes. So until we get to those numbers, we will start our lesson. And until then, I will draw in this post-it and let you guys know how cool it is to be able to draw faces like this. Because this is what I'm going to teach you guys today. So I'm going to teach you guys ways to be able to map out your faces so that you can start developing your characters a little bit easier. I'm going to show you guys some simple tricks that are going to allow you to put things in the right places so that you don't have to guess anymore where things are supposed to go. And that's going to help you with your eyes. It's going to help you with your uh, noses, for your mouths. I'm essentially going to give you guys the little guidelines, the little guide marks that I look and I see whenever I am drawing a specimen.
So we will work all the way down to like our shoulders to, to work on the neck muscles and be able to show you guys a little bit of how to draw this area, the proportions, how to actually like differentiate somebody that has like a really big neck besides somebody that has a really little neck and how to actually play around with those concepts as well. So that is going to be a really nice big lesson today. Uh, it should be an important one as well for you guys. It should be a good one. So make sure to share that stream so that we can get as many people as we can in. And let's uh, make sure that we actually teach as many people as we can. Like always, I'm not doing this for money. I don't do this for money. Like I get my money through my sales of my books and stuff like that. So I do these streams to be able to just help people out. I don't believe that people should pay a ridiculous amount of money for artwork or to learn how to draw and to like unlock their imaginations. So I do these for free every day just to help uh, you know, those people that can't afford it. Because I was one of those people at one point, right? I, I didn't have the ability or the money to be able to actually like study what I wanted. And it was really hard to find that stuff online at that time. So now I have the ability to show you guys a little bit of love and be able to do that for you. So make sure if you guys want to be helpful throughout the stream, make sure to remind people to like and share the stream. That's all, the only thing that I really need from you guys. If you guys can be helpful like that, that'd be amazing. And we're almost at those numbers. So we are almost good to go. Bum, bum. Bum. All right, I think we beat those numbers. We can start our lesson now. Okay, cool, awesome. So heads in general uh, are actually relatively easy to break down, but you have to see them in steps, right? If you're going to take a face and you want to draw something mega detailed, like you want to like, let's say you start with like a normal traditional route of just splitting this in half, right? The normal things that are hard for people to understand, especially in a three-quarter view, is the understanding of the nose bridge, Right? The nose bridge tends to block a little bit of the eyes here, and they tend to make the eyes look different. So therefore, it makes it a little harder for us to understand. So that's why I like to start with that part. So I start with that part so that I know that my eye, whatever shape I choose, is going to be behind it. Right? So I like to draw first for my eyeballs. So I'm going to draw my nose bridge. I can draw my nose in there too if you want, like if you feel confident enough. So nose bridge... This nose bridge can lead into your eyebrows. So these nose bridge sections lead into your eyebrows. If you want to continue through your eyebrows, then the eyebrows rotate around your face. They could be in two ways. It could be like a little heart that leads back to your chin. Right? That is one way to see it. Right? Uh, so that is the little heart method to find the features in the chin and the cheekbones and stuff like that. So you draw a little heart and you find those features. Then from the edges of your nose, you go down like a little teardrop. Well, it's not quite like that. It's like your heart and then your teardrop is inside. There you go. So you end up with a shape like this. So if you end up with a shape like that, you can map out your faces really quickly by just making that shape and then adding your features inside. So that is one way to break it up. You guys can use that technique in a lot of different perspectives. You just have to make sure that if you're looking at a profile, the profile is just half the heart. Okay, so doing that, getting your teardrop, gives you your nose, and gives you your mouth. Okay, so that's one way to go about it. You can use a heart to be able to map them out. This is a technique that I just barely kind of like ran into, and it's actually kind of cool. I really actually enjoy it. So that is one way that you can learn to be able to do that. And now let's like actually see what these guidelines do. So these guidelines are really cool because the heart in itself can be fit into any shape you want. 
Okay, let's do a couple shapes. We'll draw some hearts inside of these shapes and let's see what happens. Okay, so we have a midline and we have our heart. The top of the heart is gonna be our eyebrow. So we could actually, after we draw it in, we could change it to a different type of facial. Like you can just move it slightly so that it's not exactly that same thing, but it's going to incorporate that element. So you use it to map it out, but then after that you can change it to whatever you need. So now we have our eyebrows. Now this is our chin at the bottom. That means that we have to fit eyes. Okay, so another way to learn about eyes, okay? Your eyebrow is always going to encompass your eye. So wherever your eyebrow is, if you just draw a box going down in a slight taper, you're gonna get the perfect placement for your eyes. Ta-da! So anytime you have your eyebrows, Draw a little tapered line down. It's going to give you your nose bridge. And it's going to give you the spacing for your eye. <clears throat> so um, it's not too hard, right? So regardless of whatever styling you choose, you can use this little heart method to be able to understand how to draw this upper part. Now, let, here comes the cool part. The outside of this, the mouth is normally, it normally ranges to the middle of your eyes, normally. But you can use these guidelines, since it's almost there, you can use these as the limiter for your mouth. So as long as you fit your mouth inside those shapes, it's going to look perfectly fine. Whatever shape you draw here, whatever opening, as long as you draw it within that space, it's going to look cool. So now the nose, right? The nose is always so annoying. Like the nose is always the most crucial part because it like obstructs other things. But let me explain it to you guys easy. Wherever your eyes are, so let's say that you draw your eyes like this, right? Just like normal eyes, or let's draw like some sexy sensual eyes, and we'll draw some cartoony eyes. So we'll draw a couple different sets of eyes so you guys see how this applies to different styles. Okay, so we have three different sets of eyes, and we're going to set a nose to each one of these guys. So this one's going to have a mouth right here. This one's going to have a mouth that's like, like a monster, I guess. And then this one's going to have a little goofy one, like the Joker or something. Okay. So now we have three different completely eyes, three completely different sets of noses, uh, mouths. So now what do we do to add noses to them? Well, it's actually going to be really simple. You're going to take the middle of your eyes and connect them like if they were glasses. Right? That's the first thing you're going to do. Even if they're together, you're going to connect. Them. Then you're going to choose a little triangle or a little teardrop that goes from there down to the edge of your mouth. That's going to give you the maximum width of your nose. Your nose can be about that wide to be effective in that drawing. So now that you have that little triangle, all you got to do is draw another little diamond inside and you get the perfect spacing for your nose. The, regardless of how big you want it, you know? So that little top triangle that you make essentially is replicating this. You're replicating that little tiny triangle in your skeletal like system that replicates your nose canal. 
That is what you're essentially trying to replicate. So as you guys can see, it normally sits around where the eye would go. So the break into the nose happens right where the eyes connect, therefore starting your nose bridge there. And then you can add all your designs of whatever you feel like to them. And you'll get used to drawing them smaller and bigger depending on how much knowledge you have about overlaps and perspective. So if you are not comfortable drawing a big nose, it's probably because you don't understand how to draw a big nose and then draw things behind it. Right? So you feel like something's just wrong because maybe like it's just not going the way that you want. It doesn't quite look right. So maybe you avoid doing them. But something that is just overlapped or behind can be easily be drawn by somebody that has that like knowledge. So if you see that it's hard, it's just it's not necessarily that it's a really hard topic. It's just that it's a harder like thing to actually learn. So it just might take you a little bit longer to be able to get to that point. But this is also still a heart. It's just a twisted heart with two sides a little bit more. See what I mean? So what kind of pen am I using? I'm just using a BIC. Just a normal, cheap, big pen. So, okay, no, now that's the heart method. So being able to see things in patterns is going to be a thing, right? That's going to be a consistent thing in these lessons. So let's move on to another type of drawing. Let's uh, move on to the mask method. Okay, let's draw one more right here. Mm -hmm. heart. Yeah, that works. Hearts. <laughs> yeah, boy. Okay, so the heart method is actually quite interesting. It's quite fun. It's nice and easy to actually remember. And it leaves you a lot of room for playing with the, the general concept of whatever you feel like adding to it. It doesn't limit you into a certain style of drawing. And it doesn't limit you into a certain parameter of uh, limitations like, you know, like a Marvel style or an anime style or whatever, like that limits you to something. You can turn this into anything you feel like drawing. So this could be an animal. This could be a panda. This could be a robot. This could be anything like that as well. So the heart method is actually pretty fun. And it's something that I recommend that you guys play around with. If you guys feel like uh, some sort of placement issue is off or like you guys maybe feel like something might be slightly off in your drawing, like all these methods are meant to be referenced back to for that reason, to help you guys find out where the issues might be. So I like to switch between them all the time to make sure that I catch the little tiny nuances that I want in my styling. So let's finish drawing all these little hearts and we'll move on to the mask method. The mask method is my favorite way of mapping faces and it's the most consistent in my opinion. So the second way that Rod draws his faces is the mask method. The mask method, it consists of drawing a face of a shape and then drawing a little bean bag inside that kind of looks like a mask. What does this do though? What does this do? Well, this is incredibly informative for just being a simple shape like this. Uh, this shape at the edges right here gives you the side of your face. That's your temples, therefore that is your eyebrow line. Already from the get-go, I have my eyebrows, my cheekbones, and I can just edge that off into whatever chin I want. So without any thought, I already have eyebrows, side of the face, and cheekbones. 
But not just that, at the beginning of my eyebrows, I can curve that into this little round part and I have my nose bridge. This nose bridge can be as wide or as thin as I need it, and then it goes into my nose canal that would just create a space for my nose. Any shape that I want that fits within this space can be suited for a nose. I personally like little diamonds because they give you a nice little shape that's a top and a bottom, and you can add a little diamond to give it the little roundness like the little ball of the nose or whatever. And you can switch them out a lot by just changing those three elements and make different noses like that. Right? That's all you need to do to change noses when it comes down to like a front view at least. And from a side view, it's not very different as well. It's just a little diamond and you change that little diamond around to whatever shape you need for your nose. So that is what I like to draw for noses. Then from there, it gives you, again, the teardrop. And again, it comes down to pretty similar to this. This could also be a heart at this point. So it comes to the same conclusion, and then you end up with the same sort of mapping out so you can create your things like that. So it's just another way to skin the cat, but it's another different method to do it. So if you don't feel comfortable drawing in one way, don't draw that way. Draw in another way. And if that one doesn't make sense either, then you draw in another way. And then you find another way. And then another until it makes sense. Right? That is essentially what we do, the mask method. So let's draw the mask method in a couple different ways. So this is the edge for this guy. Let's draw some three-quarter masks. So with the mask method, I like to start and only draw the top part of the head first. Essentially, what I like to draw is the parts that don't move from the head. I don't like drawing the entirety of the head in, at all. I like drawing up to here because up to here, it doesn't move. Up to here, you have the parts of your body that stay like relatively still at any given point. Right? You have your temple, you have this, and you have that. We're not representing this part. We're just representing up to here. That is what we are representing with the mask, this little section right there. So as we simplify it and make it into an easy way to represent it, I like to do it like that. The mask can change whatever shape you need your cheekbones. If we were trying to match these, it would be more like this. Right? It would come out a little bit because these would be coming out. This, again, is the edges of your eye socket, but that also matches nicely with your eyebrows. So that makes you and gives you a nice little surface to do that on. Whatever curvature there is here for your nose bridge is the same curvature you would add to the side. So curvature here is the same as the curvature here, here, here. So all those tend to match up. Creating a little box for your eyes. You already have your space for your nose in this little pocket that you draw for yourself. So you just have to draw your nose coming out of there. And then you already have your cheekbones, and your cheekbones in a straight line, well, not a straight line, but like a solid line from your cheekbones down can give you any type of jaw that you want from this character. So from your cheekbones down, you get to choose how wide your chin is, how wide your jaw is, how what type of styling you want. Do you want it to be like a little kid? Do you want it to be an adult? Do you want it to be a superhero? Right? So once you get to that point, you have another set of like, you know, things that you need to think about. Do you want it to be a big person with a big jawline? Do you want it to be a person that has like a certain facial structure? Do you want a person that has a mouth that's like really low, a person that has a mouth really high? Like what is the purpose of the character? That's when you get a chance to play around with. And then you get to the top part of the head, which gives you your hair and your your uh, forehead. 
So your forehead and your hairline. And then that's another set of things that you can think about because you need to think about what type of hair does he have? Does he have a receding hairline? Does he have spiky hair? Does he have volume to his hair? Does he have styling? Like what is going on with this character? So there's a lot of things that go into your like thought process whenever you're drawing. So you have to learn to break it up into smaller sections so that you can focus on each individual section at any given time. So instead of seeing the whole face as one big unit, like instead of seeing it like this, like we often do, right? Seeing it as a like, nice big unit that you have to draw the whole thing at once, right? Like don't necessarily do that. Like that, that is good to learn at first, right? But when you're starting to actually learn to like, do more with your drawings, you want to be able to get really cool facial expressions. So breaking it back down into smaller sections can help you have different angles for your nose, different angles for the bottom part of your mouth. And that is essentially how you're going to develop a much cooler like styling by understanding how to alternate these basic features and it's much easier when you break them down into two sections. It's just going to be much easier as well to be able to move them and like have fun with them, move them into perspective. And even just rotate them. So it's easier to rotate this in space. to get those angles that are hard than it is to draw the entirety of the jaw. Right? It's harder to draw all these things, but once you have the basic shape, you can just draw through your basic circle and get them. So it's you have to learn to take baby steps. You can't always just jump in and do a full on illustration. It doesn't always work like that. If you are finding it hard to find the placement of things, if you're finding it really, really hard to understand where things go, like the eyes or you're like mismatching or the spacing between your nose and your eyes is different or weird or the spacing between your mouth and your nose is too little, too big, uh, all those things get fixed by understanding your basic anatomy. So understanding this, and like details and stuff like that, that's really cool. But understanding that underneath all this stuff, there is an actual anatomical structure that is the reason why those lines are there. So all those lines are there because there's bone and there's muscles that are there. And if you don't understand how they're there or what makes them be there, it's going to be really hard for you to stylize anything along the face. So basic factor in understanding style is taking basic anatomy and then deforming that in a way that's going to provide you a different look. So if I wanted a character that was, I don't know, highbrow that is how they all those things relay to your actual drawing so you have your cheekbones you have your jawline that comes from underneath connects back up here your ear connects to the top you have your temple and you have your space for your brain So can you do Batman? Yeah, something like Batman along the lines of this would be done like this. You would draw Batman's sort of relatively boxy shape. I'm going to draw a mask. The mask itself is going to help me draw Batman because he already has a mask in itself. Let's give him a nice little chin. Give him some little eyes. 
underneath our eyebrows. <laughs> so something like that. So if you wanted to apply even more cool stylings like that, like, I mean, it's all going to be dependent on how much you know about uh, perspective and um, perspective and anatomy, essentially it. Like it, the more you know about those two topics, the more cool things you guys can do. Like that is essentially all it breaks down to. I am the darkness. Can you show how you would draw a head with hair on it? Yeah, of course. So if you were drawing a head again, another head, and you, again, they don't have to start as circles. We just start drawing them as circles because that's what they teach us, right? They teach us to draw a circle. Like, but like from the front, at least, our heads are more like boxes, like with a round top. So if you take like a round top and then make a box for the bottom, it's going to be easier for you to draw your faces. Like, um, I start with a box because it's easy. You can start with a jaw if you want, like by doing it like that. But I just like drawing it like this because it gives me the liberty to be able to manipulate that shape any way I want, right? If I want the mouth to go this way, woo, all of a sudden that mouth is going that way because I have that spacing right there. I just curve my middle line to go that way. So allowing yourself the freedom to have all that space to play with is really nice. I draw my mask, my eyebrows, draw a tapered box down to come up with my eyes. Gives me my eyeliner, my eye, uh, eyelid. Then my nose would be right here. Let's draw a nice big conquer of a nose. From my cheekbones to whatever width of the chin I want is going to be the limitations for my mouth. So I can draw two dots, curve a line, curvy line, overlap the top, create negative space. I have a mouth. From here to the edge of the nose to the edge of my mouth gives me that little mustache line. So now I have all the lines of my face. And then you want it here, right? So they... Oh, we haven't finished the face. We still have to add a little bit of width to the face because our cheekbones, especially if it's a three-quarter or a slight three-quarter view, we need a little bit of depth to the face. So we give it a little bit of a side, and then we add our ear. Now hair is going to fall within the last third of our face. So if we divide this into three, we're going to be able to find a couple different things. Um, the eyebrows, eyes, and nose normally fall into section two. I, uh, the top of the eyebrows or elevated eyebrows, forehead and hairline fall into section one. And then mouth and chin fall into section three. So if we have this and we have the top of our head, we're going to have our eyebrows, a little bit of space for our forehead, that's something you have to gauge because other pe people have different hairlines. So you have to gauge that. But from the top of our eyebrows or even better, the top of where your eyebrow is supposed to go. <laughs> Let me put like that, that because we often like to draw floating eyebrows. So if you are a person that draws an eyebrow like up here, you wouldn't add extra space here for your forehead. No, you would do it from this space. That is the anatomy reference point for your eyebrow. So your hairline would be roughly where your eyebrow is. So that's the problem as well with drawing like floating hairlines, like floating eyebrows. When you draw things out of place, you need to accommodate for that, right? If you're drawing something that's stylized, AKA a floating eyebrow, you need to remember where the normal thing goes so that you can 
modify it, but it, so it doesn't throw off the rest of your drawing. So if you're drawing hair, you need to know where your eyebrow is so you know how much forehead you have. Otherwise, it's just going to look like this. It's going to look really weird. It's going to end up in a situation where you have your eye, your eyebrow, and then you're going to add an extra space so your hair is not going to start all the way up to here. As opposed to eyebrow is supposed to fall right here, but I'm drawing it here, and I draw my hairline right there. So now instead of having all this extra space that I didn't want, I have my hair where I need it. So all that extra space was only because I mistakenly think that my eyebrow is in the right place. Hmm. Can you please do a realistic nose? So I don't really take much time to do like realism because it's not necessarily something that I focus too much on. But knowing and understanding all the elements that consist of your nose are very important in order to be able to draw them accurately. And what you need to really think about is a couple different elements, right? A couple different elements that really throw us off when it comes down to drawing our like, actual like faces. Our nose is a complicated shape. It's quite a complicated shape. It consists of your nose bridge, which ends up being like, like a cylinder on the top of your face, but it comes to a point. So it's like, a t imagine that you're drawing a cylinder, but then you flatten the top side. That is what your nose bridge is. You flatten the top side of a cylinder And then that goes into a little ball. And that ball has two little balls on the side. So that is what your nose bridge is. It's a flat section on top. And then you have these semi-rounded or flat sides that create a shadow. So you end up with, uh, let's see, it's kind of like a teardrop shape a lot of the times to this top part. And then you can draw it like that as well. But you got to think about this as a flat side, roughly, and uh, angle side that takes you down the side of your nose. So your nose is not just this. Okay, it's not just a little line that goes back out. Even something like this would be able to be broken down into a more like shapely figure if we take the time to dissect it. But when you have your nose, that's your nose bridge, and then it goes into your nostrils that are a little bit like a box as well. Then you have your little nose of your ball of your nose that is like a little teardrop in there. And that little teardrop sometimes has a little bit of a ledge. So sometimes you see a little bit of something like this, like it splits the top part of the nose. Okay? So sometimes you have to add those little indications, but we won't do it on this one. Then you have your upper lip that connects to the middle of your nose. So that bottom part right here of your nose, that's what connects to that little tiny breakage that goes out, and it normally has those little dimples if you have your lips that are very much extruded. If you have those little tiny dimples on your lips, you'd normally have that little thing on your mouth too. Could you explain cheeks if you have not? Yeah, of course. Uh, let's do cheeks. Like the reason that we, I, I found cheeks to be incredibly hard, right? When I was learning how to draw, like cheeks were just like an incredibly annoying part because I didn't really understand them. Like I didn't understand what I was drawing. Like I would draw an example of bad drawing. So this is how I used to draw. I used to draw my heads like this.
something like that, right? Like I would have these gigantic cheeks right here. And I used to draw like this because I copied it from a cartoon called uh, The Misadventures of Billy and Mandy, <laughs> right? So I learned how to draw faces like this and I was quite effective at it. I got to the point where I was able to draw pretty much anybody that I wanted super simply by having that sort of styling. And it was really fun to do so. But the problem is, is that I got so good at doing things like this that I never really took the time to understand what I was drawing. So I was really, really good at adapting styles and being creative with them, right? So I could develop a ton of different things like this. But when it came down to actually drawing this in a different perspective or a different view, I would be like, what the hell am I doing? Like if I try to draw this from a front view, where do you put this big cheek? Like since it's on that side only and not on this side, that would be like drawing a character that had this sort of tumor. <laughs> this is what you're drawing when you're drawing this. You're drawing a character that just has one massive cheek and then the other cheek is non-existent. So when I discovered that it was really hard to rotate these characters, drawing them like this, um, I was like, I can't do this. Like that, this, is not like, uh, this is not a comprehensive way for me to draw things. Yes, I understand that I can draw them really pretty, but I need to understand more. So I started delving into actual anatomy, and this is what I came up with, right? So a character like this, a character that you draw that has a big bump like that, first of all, that's called an Elroy Jetson, because there's a little character from like an old cartoon called the Jetsons, called Elroy, that had the nose like that, or the cheekbone like that. And that's where they get that term from. So when you have a character and you want to actually make sense of this, so imagine that you have your character and this is essentially what you're doing. So when you want to make sense of this, you can just draw a mask and give yourself a sense of what, what features are being pushed here. So from what I see here, it seems like the bottom of this mask would just be pushed out in order to be able to match that styling. So I'm going to do the same on this side. And just like that, just by doing that, I give myself the guidelines to be able to draw this character with that styling, but have it make sense in three-dimensional space. And then you can just add anything you want at that point, right? So being able to understand your concept of spacing is what's going to help you be able to be more consistent with your drawings. So when you're drawing something that's very stylized, let's say something that is just like super out of this world stylized, right? Like, like some graffiti character or something like that. So let's say that we have something like that, something super, super stylized. Even something like this can be used, like you can use the mask stuff to reference back to this to make sure that everything's falling in the right place. So we have a huge cheekbone right here. So we need to figure out what the side of the cheekbone would be over here. So we go into our eyebrows, since we have our eyebrows. Eyebrows go down to our eyes and into our mask. It goes around our eyes. So now we're seeing that this mask right here is pulled out. So now we have to just match this shape right here on this side and close our mask off, draw our box down from our eyebrows to give us our spacing for our eye, draw whatever shape we want for our eye. We'll highlight all the mask sections so you guys see how cool that is. 
And then we have our ears, and then we have whatever styling we want for this part. So even something along the lines of a graffiti character or something incredibly stylized that doesn't really necessarily have anatomical sense can be made to me, like make sense by just simply putting some guidelines in. So that is a very easy and cool way to actually be able to see faces. The mask method in itself is just a fantastic approach to mask, like faces, and I absolutely love it. Because there is no real like structure to it. You can draw them little, you can draw them big, you can draw them with this middle section wide, you can draw them with that little middle section small. And all of that correlates to a different style of character. Everything that you draw different is going to essentially change the anatomy behind it, you know? It's going to change the anatomical like spacing. Therefore, it's going to give you a different look. So every single time that you change it, it's going to be a slightly different skeletal system. And you can use that to be able to draw different characters, but with the same knowledge, okay? So you can use the same knowledge to every style that you draw. How cool is that? Like, how cool is it that you can just take any, like, the same knowledge? You don't have to adapt to different things. Like, if you wanted this to be, like, an anime character, you just draw that, but you draw anime styling. Style is nothing more than just the way that you make things look pretty, okay? There is not just one way to draw. There's not one style you're going to have. You're going to have a ton of styles throughout your career. You're not just going to be relegated to drawing one way. You are going to be amazed at how many different styles open up to you once you start unlocking the secrets of actually using your knowledge. So using your knowledge like this perspective stuff and these little mass techniques and stuff like that is meant for you to understand how to map out your anatomy. This is just it's not a replacement for you going out and drawing skeletons and drawing like mapping out face features and stuff like that. Try doing this exercise. I love doing this exercise side by side because it's something that helped me a lot. Right? Try to draw a basic, a basic skull. It's gonna take reference for you. So please get reference and draw yourself a little bit of a like a quick skull. Okay? then you're going to draw an actual face next to this. You're going to see all those little lines you drew and how those correlate to where they land on your face. Your mouth, well, these are your teeth, so your mouth has to be around your teeth. You have your bottom teeth and your chin, so that's your chin your jaw. This is just such an easy, simple exercise to do, and it helps so much, right? It helps understand the spacing you need between your eyebrows and your eye. If you have a problem with that, understanding that is as easy as just mapping it out onto an actual base system. Understanding how these little wrinkles and these little divots in your skeletal system and why you have shadows here and stuff, that is as easy as just seeing how your brain, like shapes work with your actual skull and how that would apply to the rest of your shape. There's a shadow underneath your cheekbone because that is a shape that overlaps your jaw. 
So therefore, that is why you got a shadow underneath your cheekbone. You get a little bit of a line from here to here, from your nose to the edge of your mouth, because that is how your bones work. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the differentiation from your cheekbone to your like upper teeth. That is why you get that line. When you, when you have like your nose, right? And you have your nose and you're wondering what those lines are at the side. Well, that's your cheekbone. That's your cheekbone right here. And then this is your teeth line. So it creates a curvature here that creates another curvature here and therefore creates a little pocket. And then when you have like flesh and stuff like that, it creates just little dimples. Do you need to learn every muscle? No, 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 no. You don't need to learn every muscle. You don't need to do all that shit. So you can, and that would make your drawings better, but you don't have to. Like, you can go and draw a face by just drawing three eyes and then making the last eye into a mouth by just giving different negative space. So you could do a mouth that easy. Ta-da! Or you can do a mouth that's more complex, like a face that's more complex. Like faces in general consist of a couple elements. They consist of a mouth, eyes, eyebrows, and sometimes a nose because that's not even a given in everything, right? Even ears aren't given in every single face. But when, if you have anything with all these elements, it's going to be a face. You just need to understand where to place them. Um, if you learn the rule of thirds, that is going to be the, the easiest way to understand this. And I'm going to show you guys two ways to apply the rule of thirds. So this is another way to approach faces, and this is going to be the last method that I teach you guys today. So we've learned the mask method, we've learned the heart method, and we've learned, uh, we're about to learn the last one, which is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is really fun because it just like simplifies everything completely. How long have you been live? I've been live for about like 40 minutes, I think. These normally take me about an hour to explain each time. So yeah, so I think it's been about 40 minutes. We're getting closer towards the end of the sketch. I still like the night you did than the phases of drawing. Oh, thank you. So let's go into the rule of thirds. And how do we apply the rule of thirds in pretty much every single way? So the rule of thirds ex like essentially explain that you can divide a face into three parts going up and down. So this is going to be a front view. And then from a side view, you do the same thing, but you do it with four. So from a front, you only do it in two. From a side, you do it in threes. Okay, so if you understand of your faces like this, we are going to heavily take into consideration this middle line. This middle line is going to be where most of our features go. Okay, we will call, call this the feature zone by a lack of any other word. This is going to contain our eyebrows, our eyes, our nose, and our ears. This little area can be correlated in a front view by going to this same spot. So from here, from if this is not touching the middle, I'm not going to touch the middle here. If this isn't touching the edge of the first square, I'm not going to touch the edge of the first square. Cool. This is going to be the same. The nose canal is a little bit below the line. The ear is within this space, but it's going to be back here somewhere. So just by doing that, I have come up with a bunch of the parts of the front and the side without any issues. The same thing can be applied to the mouth and even the, something like the chin.
connecting that to my ear is not all that hard from that point. You can round out the top part to create the forehead and then go back as far as you need to to create the rest of the features. It doesn't always end up over here. It's just a measurement to give you a good like standard situation. So now let's try that in a different way. Let's try a different styling. Let's change the lines to be that big. We want a character with really big eyes. So I'm going to draw my eyebrows really big because this is the spacing for my eyebrows. The top line will always be my eyebrows for the most part. Then we're going to have the nose down here. We're going to have some eyes down here. We can have our mouth and our jaw and our chin, this little section. And that's like that. We have another character that's just a completely different styling. Let's draw a three-quarter view. The three-quarter view is an interesting one because I had to think a little bit about how to do that. So if you're going to do a three-quarter view, just draw a box that has the side panels be a little bit longer than the front view. Okay, and then this is what you're gonna do. It's gonna it's gonna look weird, so pay attention. Okay, you're still gonna divide your front into two. Okay, but since you already have three lines right here, and we only draw one side of the the feature, right? When we go into the profile, we're gonna skip this line and then draw another line just to have our two lines of our profile. How does that translate to this? Well, you'll see in a second. Follow your perspective lines. Midline, we have our nose. It goes a little bit below center. This line doesn't quite touch this one. It doesn't quite touch the middle. We're going to do the same thing we did for the profile. But we are just going to map these out as if they weren't. And you end up with a pretty accurate depiction of your face. Uh, this one's a little bit lower. But you get an idea. You can take that same constitutional rules that make these two and the rule of thirds and then just apply it to a side view. And then the three-quarter view, we just have to like eliminate the other line to be able to get that spacing. Uh, so let's try one more time, but with a, something a little bit more complex, right? So you guys can see how cool this can be. So let's draw this. We'll draw completely... There you go. And let's draw like an ogre or something like that, something cool. So an ogre, this is my face feature. So all my features are going to be squinched in there. So I'm going to have my nose. I'm going to have some big eyebrows into my eyes. Then my ear, I'm going to draw my ear really big because I drew that back part a little bit bigger. And then my chin, I want it to be a little bit bigger than that. My mouth is going to curve up. He's going to be angry. My chin down here. And I'm going to draw... What should we draw? Do, do we give him armor? Do we just give him a big forehead? Do we give him a hat? Let's give him a hat. <laughs> He's going to be frat, fraternity ogre. Give him like a beard or something. <laughs> I 
So as you can see, it's a very versatile thing. You can do that with like anything really though. Like once you get comfortable with the proportions, you can use this to create little animals. You can use this to create like monsters. You can use that to create pretty much anything you guys feel like drawing. So it's going to be a rule that just helps you map out things a little bit better in space. And it's going to be something that you're going to be able to use later on for your faces, your bodies and stuff like that. Because once you get used to one rotating shape, it's very easy to get used to other rotating shapes like the jaw or like the, the rib cage or the hip bones or the ankles or the knee and all those things like that get a little bit easier to understand once you understand how to map them out in space. Like a rib cage would just be something along the lines of this, right? Into your collarbone and then that would be divided again in threes or twos, whatever makes it easier. And then essentially learning just how your body is like mapped out is going to help you a ton. So understand your anatomy, understand how to simplify it, and then use those techniques combined with the ones that I'm teaching you and call back to these videos and I post as much as you need to to be able to get these concepts down to a T so that you guys can just draw freely. And then using those things, you can do things like these. Right? Or you guys can just draw yourselves if you guys are so egotistical like me. You know, just draw yourselves in a ton of different styles. Uh, I'm just playing with different drawing stuff. Have you mastered it? Yeah, I think I think so. I think I'm getting to the point. I, I think I'm just adding to it more and more and more. But I think that I have uh, officially gotten to the point where I can say that I've probably mastered the ability to draw uh, my mass technique to its full extent right now. So yeah, I do believe that I have gotten pretty proficient on it. So, when is my learning how to draw book coming out? Well, that has to be. Uh, I need to. Like, I need to start a Kickstarter for that. I'm pretty sure that it would be fulfilled actually remarkably quick. Uh, I just need to start a Kickstarter so I can have funds, so I can like set time aside from freelancing to actually do it. That is literally the only reason that I haven't done it. Like the only reason that I have not yet tackled that is because you know, uh, you know, I got to pay bills. <laughs> you know, like that is essentially it. So I, I end up taking jobs that I don't necessarily feel like doing all the time, and you know that eats up a lot of my time. So I need to make sure that I don't do that so that I can actually focus on the things that I need to do to leave my legacy. Because I think the moment that I release that book, that book is going to be so influential. I have a feeling that book, I'm not, I'm not just like smoking, sh like, like speaking crap out of my ass. Uh, the way that I have learned to explain things, I have, um, I have a very good grasp as to what the struggles are for people. So I am developing a way to teach you guys permanent, you know, like not like a style, not like a way to just like draw some things. No, I want to teach you guys how to be able to see everything, everything. And that, that's a trick. That's a tricky thing. But if I can manage to have you guys be able to see this and be able to see this, if I can get you guys to see these two shapes, I can get you guys to draw anything you want. And I promise you that. So that is going to be my SAM system, okay? My SAM system is going to be so fun. And SAM stands for Simple Anatomy Mannequin. So the SAM method is going to be, in my opinion, going to be the most comprehensive way to be able to exercise your ability to draw what you can right now into pretty much absolutely anything with just a little bit of practice. That is what I'm going to stand on and I'm going to promise pretty much anybody that takes my course, they'll learn something new. Like it's just, this just going to be good. <laughs> 
But until then, I will be doing courses for 21 Draw and I will be uploading courses to YouTube and everything like I always do because, you know, I love you guys. And I want to make sure that you guys have a good amount of resources to you guys have for free so that you never get, you know, like bogged down by not having money. Like that is essentially like such a such an important thing to me to do. Like I can't take away the resources that I have provided for people just because of money. Right. So I need to make sure that you guys still get your content and you guys get uh, the ability to learn for free. That will never change. OK, so rest assured, you guys will always get rod gun lessons if I can afford it. And I am not starving to that. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. I'll leave you guys with a nice little message on this Tuesday afternoon. I want you guys to go out into the world and show a little bit of kindness to everybody. So I want you guys to go and show a little bit of love and love a little. I want you guys to go out into the world as well. And I want you guys to go enjoy some sunlight, some daylight, some human interaction. I want you guys to go outside and I want you guys to live a little. Go ahead and put on your favorite podcast, favorite movie, favorite TV show today, and make sure you laugh a little. You know, you need that laughter and joy in your life. And since we are artists and it's something that we need to do on a constant basis to get better, you guys need to go out and you guys need to draw a lot. Thank you guys so much for being my sketch buddies. My books and everything else is for sale in my website, in my links in my description. If you guys feel like supporting, that is the best way to do it. At least you guys get something cool. Donations are cool, but I do really highly appreciate the fact that you guys might be able to make a better use of your money by going into a store and buying yourself some art supplies. So you don't necessarily have to send me donations. Buy my books. That way you guys get something out of it at least. And I will see you guys sometime soon. Take care, everybody.